Okay, this is just a very quick talk through OpenShot for any of you that haven't used it before. First of all, I've gone to Google, I've typed in OpenShot. You'll see it comes up hopefully at the top. Very occasionally you'll find that Flamora comes up at the top because they advertise. It's a completely different platform, so scroll down. Find the one that says OpenShot.org, click on it. When it loads, you'll find it works on Linux, Mac and Windows, so it should work on most of the things you're working on, um, and obviously download it. Once it's downloaded, if I go on to open shot on my computer, it's a pretty straightforward platform. Okay, it might take a few seconds to open up. And what we will see when it opens, here we go, is we've basically got three spaces. The left hand window here is where we're gonna put the files. The right hand is the output window. And at the bottom here is our timeline where we're gonna see work progress. So for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna borrow one I've uh, done before. So I'm going to start by saving my project doesn't really matter where you save it, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to save it into my film space, or video space. I've got a place called School Films, and I'm going to call this Demo of OpenShot. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import some files. I'm going to import some files into this one. And the, all I'm going to do again, I'm just going to have a quick look through, go down into my videos files, which is... Yep. Okay, and I'm going to borrow a video. In fact, let's borrow the Simpsons one. Okay. If I now want to work on the Simpsons film, I pull it down into the track space here. And if you move across on the bar, you should see the Simpsons shows up here. Obviously, you should be using your own content. Editing this is pretty simple. So if I, for instance, don't want the video to start here where Marge is talking, but instead want the video to start here, I think where... Let's just scroll across, try and find the space where Lisa comes in. There we go. Then what we can do is move it to the right place, right click on it, slice. Now we can either keep both sides and then delete the side we don't want, or we can uh, just keep the right hand side because I don't want the left. So I'm gonna keep the right hand side, delete the left, and I can move it along. If we want to change things like the volume, we can right click on it and on the volume control here, it will show you things like the levels, so you can increase the level or reduce the level. We can also separate the audio. So if we separate the audio, what you'll find is it puts the audio as an additional track below it. So that might take a second here. And that's particularly good if you want to then remove the audio so that you can then do a voiceover. Also on here, if we go into uh, things, we can change things like the layout to where it appears. So it could appear um, a quarter of the size, or it could appear in the center, or it could appear at the top. So for instance, if I just undo that last edit, so that's all hopefully reunited. Let's just undo. I'll take again a second for it to apply itself. Okay, and then on this one, I'll do it in a second. On this one, if we try something like the layout, so if we go to something like quarter of the size, top left, okay, you'll find that appears there. And this is really good because this would then allow us to have an overlay. So if I now pull the sound off that one and then pull a second clip in, I haven't got a second clip, so I'm gonna use the same clip again. What you'll find now is that this first window appears in the top left hand corner and the moment is a quarter size and this one appears in the back and if I play it because I've removed the sound off this top one we'll only see the bottom one normally I would imagine you want it the other way because you'd want the top one to be a voiceover or something but if we just press play for a second what you should see is Lisa's talking but we're not getting any sound from the Marge video at the top there okay so we can kind of build these layers together we can also add uh, titles in here. So if we go to the titles and go to titles, and we can choose a title off here. There's some fancy ones. There's some funny ones about audiences and so on. I quite like the bar title, so I'm going to call this open shot title. And I'm going to write um, welcome, except for apparently I can't write. I'm just going to write Welcome to OpenShot. Wait for that to appear. Okay, this top bit is just the name of the file. This bottom bit is the, the bit that's going to show. If I click on the change font, I can increase the size. I can change the colors. Okay, and all of that. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to press OK. 
the colors actually there. We can put the hexadecimal colors in as well. When you save it, it will appear here. So I've called it open shot title, so it shows there. Now I need to put that in front so that this now shows as the front layer. Then we've got this small one, and then at the back we've got the big uh, overarching one. So you'll see now if I press play, it's saying, oh, welcome to open shot there. We've got the Simpsons showing in the top corner, and we've got this bit showing um, at the bottom. Okay, so we've now got three layers of image showing there. That's possibly a little bit complicated, but it, but it does show what's possible. We can also um, add in additional sorts of titles. There's a thing here called the animated title. But if you're going to use animated title, what you have to do is first you need to connect it to Blender. So I suspect this won't show me at the moment. There you go. Um, so if you want to do this, you can, but you need to add the Blender path in. This can be quite time consuming, but it can produce some amazing effects. So you can have, I think there you go, like the Star Wars entry movie, movie and so on. Um, I'll try and throw some extra instructions on how to do that, but you will need to start by downloading um, Blender as well. So this is only something if you want to push it a bit further. Once your videos um, finish, I mean, there's a couple of other bits you can do on here. So you can do things like transition. So if we've got two videos, let's just go back a second, okay? We've got two videos like that and we want to put a transition in between them we could pull in an effect so that this one kind of rolls between one and then the other and if you overlay that and we go to somewhere like this you should see as it starts to play the end of the uh, verse get in here then starts to go through the transition effect and this us we obey the lord of thermodynamics you can see it's starting to spiral in the glitchy playback is because you haven't saved it yet, so that's not a problem in itself. That will become um, uh, an issue if it, if it was like that eventually, but it's not an actual problem because when it renders the video, it will sort out the time frame so it plays more consistently. And there are other effects in there as well. So you can blur video. So for instance, again, if I go back to this second video here, if I decide that I want this one to have a, a kind of a negative effect on it, what I should be able to do is drop the negative effect and then we can see how I'm in kind of a negative view on this one. So it is possible to play around and have some quite nice effects on this. And obviously it's possible to play around again by going in and using things like fades, um, putting rotation on. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but maybe if you videoed it in a different aspect, you might need to. Okay, the layout we've already talked about, but you can make use of that to overlay it. Time is one of the things we haven't talked about. So if you use time, one of the things you can do is you can speed it up. So you could, for instance, speed this one up so it's something like eight times the speed. And you'll see it shrinks right down. And if we go to here again, so we're back within the time frame, and I press play. Okay, it might struggle to play this, but effectively what you're seeing glimpses of there is it's now playing in high speed. And again, once this is rendered, this will play better than it's showing now, okay? Once you've completed all of this and you've got a clear title, so remember, title needs to be on the top layer so it's visible, layers of video should be behind, sound goes on the bottom, but often will be already included in your tracks. But once it's completed, you need to go to File. I would save the project first in case it fails. Then I would go to Export the Project, and at this point, it's up to you to decide at what ratio you want to decide it. So this is going to the same place. I'm calling it Demo of OpenShot. I'm saving it as an MP4 with 720 uh, pixels at 30 frames per second, which for what I want is quite good. It will be a biggish video, but not huge. Um, and the quality will be okay to watch. If I was trying to make a much better quality one, I could push this right up into 4K. Now my screen's recording at a level on this one where that is actually possible but that's going to be a huge video and it will take longer to render if you want something that's a little bit more simple the hd will give you a good quality one without quite such a big file size but i'm going to keep mine here at the 720 one because that's a reasonable size for web use without it being enormous now when i've finished i'm going to press export video and depending on how long your video is this may take a little while to to load okay once it's complete, you'll just have an MP4 file sitting inside your folder, which you can then play or upload as you need. Okay, and then it's complete.
So it's, it's not a bad pack package. There are easier ones out there. I mean, those of you who are using uh, Mac, you might prefer to use things like iMovie. One of the big things for me is that OpenShot within the advanced setting here allows you to set these um, video profiles specific. So if I'm doing something on a 360 video, OpenShot can actually edit 360 videos, whereas programs like iMovie can't. It doesn't have the power to do it. Um, so personally, I think OpenShot's a better package takes a little bit of getting your head around, but it's not overly complicated and it is worth putting the time into.